Welcome back to John's Films. No fancy intros today. You don't have to stare at my ugly mug. Instead, we're getting right into how we remove noise in the DaVinci Resolve Free Edition. You see, noise reduction is something that's pretty handy, and you can see a great example of it here. Check this. On the right, I've got no noise reduction applied, and you can see how crazy the noise out of the sensor is. Why? Well, what we're looking at is footage from a DJI first-generation Mavic Air. And in this case, it's a very small sensor akin to a little bit bigger than your cell phone sensor. It's a two-third inch sensor, if I recall. And it does a great job, except for in the darks and the lights, which is why I upgraded to a Mavic 2 Pro uh, a little bit later. Now, in this case, though, I've still got this footage from camping. It looks really nice zooming down one of these Texas rivers. But God, there's a lot of noise in some of this. Well, if I only have the free edition, I can't come into our color page and take advantage of temporal and spatial noise reduction. So I can't get rid of that in an easy way. Instead, I'm going to do this, what we'll call the hard way, but honestly, not too painful. And I have had a previous video on this for you longtime subscribers, but I was asked to make it a little bit slower. So show me how this could work a little bit easier, John. No problem. On the right here, you can see the footage that's been untreated. But inside this polygon, you can see footage that has been treated. And as we go from frame to frame, is it perfect? Oh, absolutely not. But it is a little bit better than what you're seeing here on the right, which is just the untreated footage. In mind, this drone's moving. So as you go frame to frame, this is literally the exact same spot in the river. And it's showing you the exact cleanup that gets done when we use Fusion. Why are we using Fusion? Well, Fusion is the free way to get this done. So let me take away those nodes and we'll walk through how to create this ourselves. So this is a pretty simple comp composition, but let's talk about the basics of Fusion. When you first come into Fusion, it's likely that you have two viewers up at the top. You've got viewer one and viewer two. Down here in the bottom, you've got your node graph. <clears throat> I just press the number one on the keyboard and it took my media in node, and you can see the dot right there in the first hole. That means that it's showing on viewer one. If I wanted to show it on viewer two as well, with this node selected, I can press the number two, and now media one is showing on both of them. So what is this difference here between media in and media out? Well, good news. Uh, media in is obviously the footage we're putting into it, and this is what we're sending out in between. Consider this a pipeline or a, a number of steps that get applied to the footage over time. I'm going to go back to our regular old style where I'm going to take media to out, click and hold, drag it up here. That's another way to make it show up. Well, John, I think you're pulling a fast one. How do we know that it's actually changing? Good point. To demonstrate that, I'm going to make sure I have the node selected here, media one. Go up to my effects library, which I can turn on by clicking effects and go to tools. We'll grab the blur. I'm going to use defocus and I'll just drop it right here into the chain. And now you can see on the left, if I change my defocus size, for instance, I make it more visible for you. On the right, it's nice and blurry with the defocus node. On the left, it's still the original footage. And that's because on the left, I'm showing you what came in. And on the right, media out, this is what's now going out. I can also view these individual nodes along the way. So I'll put defocus on node one and I'll grab, let's go into color. And here I'm gonna grab the brightness control just as a way for me to change something. And I'll pull down the gain and you can see all of a sudden it's getting dark. That's the media out. Alternatively, I can show you the brightness control and all of a sudden you notice very quickly. That's also the same story. If I play that on one, great. If I go back here, press the one on the keyboard, you get the idea. All right, I'm going to take those nodes out and we're going to get to business. Our job today, as we discussed, was cleaning up a lot of the noise that's in the water here, noise that's in the trees. Through my footage, for the most part, and it's not a hard and fast rule, but this isn't a tracking tutorial, so I'm just going to create a polygon that keeps track of all of the stuff I want to affect. This is really important when you're doing noise reduction work. For one, noise reduction work is pretty destructive to the footage. Um, it can blur things pretty heavily, and you really want to use it when it's too distracting with the footage uh, to start with. The second thing 
is it's very intensive for your computer, your CPU, your GPU. Um, really, primarily this, the GPU gets working pretty hard for this. So to make this clean up, the first thing I'm going to do is add our noise reduction node. And I can do that. Whew, John, what fancy magic was that? Well, here you go. With the media in one selected, so it's red, I hit shift and the space bar. It immediately pops up the select tool. And the select tool allows me to type out whatever I want to search. I'm going to type remove, and you can see remove noise is a node. Alternatively, if you were just working around in here and you're like, I know there's a noise, there we go, noise, and it'll search more of a deeper search, and here we go, remove noise. I add that to this composition, but before I even get started, this toolbar gives me quick access to some effects that are commonly used. I'm going to grab this polygon and drag it down on the composition. Now, I can use this polygon as a mask, so I put it into the blue node. Blue is typically the mask for a node. And what this does is mask out only the section I want affected. And I'm zooming in and out with the mouse wheel and the control key here. And so that I can work, I'm going to hit the single button up here. That's the single viewer versus a dual viewer. I can click back on it to go to dual if we like. There we go. And now the control button and the mouse wheel. Here we go. I'm in where I want to be. Now, you'll notice the crosshairs. That's because I have the polygon selected. And I'm going to create a new polygon by clicking and letting go with the left mouse button along the route which I'd like to mask. So scroll down with the mouse wheel to go down, scroll back up, and I can seal it there off screen. Now what this does, it's a static mask, so it is not moving. It's kind of stuck there. But for the purposes of this tutorial, and we can see the, the fallacy or the problem with this, uh, it's going to affect everything, which means it affects even that light area before we get to the part in the screen where it affects there. But this is not a tracking or keyframing tutorial, so we're not going to mess with that. We're just going to pretend that did not happen. All right. Now, for the part where we're going to get funky with it, I'm now going to start playing with my Remove Noise node. And I can do that by just clicking on Remove Noise. And much like we're used to in the Edit page, I can come up and mess with Remove Noise here in the Properties or Inspector window. There are two methods by which you can change your noise in your image. Let's remember it's only going to affect the stuff over here. The two methods are one color or two chroma. Now obviously color sounds easier and it would be if it did much for us in this instance. Let's say I were trying to clean up some of these trees. Well it's all green and so I can affect the softness of the green areas of the screen. Remember I've got a mask so it's not messing with it at the moment. By using just softening up the green channel or detailing, adding more contrast and detail to the green channel. You can use that in cases where you're seeing a bunch of uh, mostly what would usually be called chroma uh, dancing, like in dark when you start to see blues and reds popping out of like a dark sky for no good reason. You can clean that up pretty easily. In this case we're going to use the chroma settings. Chroma is a lot more akin to what you can do in your noise reduction with the color page in Studio. So it affects two areas. One is the luma, or brightness values for each pixel in the screen. And the next is chroma, that's the color. Let's go back to an area I know is being, there we go, I know is being affected. And I'm going to come here so that I can watch this. And I'm moving this temporarily so I can watch it as I'm editing. I want to see what change I'm affecting on this footage. So I'm trying to get a spot where it looks relatively similar right here on both sides of the line. Remembering that the affected area is here, the unaffected area is here. And I'm going to click Remove Noise Node again. And now, if I pop that up pretty pretty heavily, I hit the space bar to play. Didn't get much out of that, did I? And that's because it is quite painful for the computer to do. And I just noticed my GPU fan spinning up. That's because I'm making this thing work. All right. Let's go crazy with the chroma. John, uh, buddy, well done, sir, but I'm not seeing a difference. Yeah, you want to know why? 
Anybody see it? One and two. I have both viewers, one and two. Right now I'm only looking at one. Both of them coming up from media in. But if I go to media out, oh yeah, that's right. That's how that works. Duh. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is pull back on the lumen and the chroma. And see what we can do to gently affect it. See this line right here? Yeah. You can see pretty heavily um, how much this is getting affected. Looks cleaner when it's back out here. You don't see the line quite as much, but I can still see it. In fact, you can see it. How about that? The rocks. Here's a great example of the damage that this does when you use it. And that's why we have to mask it out. If we just let the whole screen do this, you'd lose a ton of detail. This is a good measure as well of how much detail I'm losing. I think that's probably in the world of acceptable, whereas that just gets totally unwatchable at some point. So I've got the world of acceptable, and now I'm going to stay on the spot of the screen where the division line is, and we're going to see what we see in differences when we pop up here. Not bad. Let's see where that line is. Okay, so it's further left than I thought. But the fact that I couldn't see it, it's right here. You can see the detail that's lost here, so what I'm going to do is pull that into the game. Let's see what that does. Yeah. Really, it's a cleaner image. Is it perfect? Not yet. Not at all. But for the sensor and for the camera and for the damage it's doing to the image, I think it's pretty acceptable. Um, I would like to have more detail in it, but if we were to create this footage so that the only part of the screen, by either tracking or uh, keyframing, the only part of the screen that were affected were the darker areas, I think we'd have a winner here. Um, the other thing you can do is come into your polygon right here and create a soft edge by dragging this out. And that soft edge is now going to help us blur the line of the affected area versus the non-affected area. And now you have to kind of come in here to see it. It's really a much smoother transition even when I've got this cranked all the way up. And I can probably get away with just a little bit more than I would have before. See, even here you can see the gradualness of it. I'll put it there. And that's how you can take care of some of the noise that you've got in your footage with DaVinci Resolve Free Edition. Now's a good time to remind you, please click subscribe. I'd love to have you come back and watch some of my other videos. And if this is really helpful, feel free to buy me a coffee. I really appreciate it. It makes my day when somebody does, and it's kind of cool. So buy me a coffee link below. Other than that, Thanks for watching. I do appreciate it, and I'm just happy to have you here. So thanks for watching, and have a great day.